going places, meeting new people, doing exciting things. Ever thought about the Air Force? May I call you Airman? Oh, yes, Captain. When I first saw you, silhouetted in the tower, <laughs> silhouetted by the light from the radar screen, <laughs> bringing in that crippled plane, a wave of confidence welled through me. And I knew that with you there, my F-111 would be a safer place to be. Oh, Captain! Captain, I have a dream! I have a dream, a big dream. A dream of democracy. That's my dream! And together, together we can help protect the free world from unfair competition <laughs> and ensure that future generations will have a free world to protect. Yes, sir! They sent me to cold school in old Monterey. I worked very hard and got my MOS. Decoded those words say FTA, but what they mean, hey, no one could guess. Free the Albanians, future teachers of America, who would write that on latrine. Foxtrot, Tango, Alpha, help me, tell me, what does it mean? Uh, just a minute, operator. Oh, damn, I don't have any change. Excuse me, Private. Do you have change for a quarter? Oh, yeah. Yeah? You do not say yeah to an officer. An officer is always addressed as sir. Now, I learned that in basic training, Private, and so did you. You always address an officer as sir. Now, I'm going to give you one more chance, and I want to hear that sir loud and clear. Private, do you have change for a quarter? No, sir. <laughs> Took one look at my face and read out an order to bar me. I said, Foxtrot, Tango, Alpha. Free the army. I think I'm gonna get me a watchdog. What you need a watchdog for, Sarge? You're surrounded by 250 armed men. That's why I'm gonna get me a watchdog. <laughs> No Vietnamese ever ordered me to fight. They never flew over my hometown to bomb me. So I have to say, Foxtrot, Tango, Alpha, free the army. We thank you for coming to this museum today. We're going to explain to you with this audio guide the circumstances connected with the bombing of Hiroshima. Science has at last conquered atomic energy, the third source of energy for mankind. However, the real first use of this energy was, unfortunately, the dropping of the atomic bomb on Hiroshima. It was August 6, 1945, 8.15 in the morning. And all citizens, children, women didn't know anything about that. So it was a great massacre. In general, the immediate damage caused by the bomb may be divided into three types. The force of the blast, or pressure wave, thermal flash, heat, and the gamma rays. The thermal flash enveloped the city in flames of extremely high temperatures emanating from the fireball. Numerous people, maybe two or three hundred thousand, lost their lives or were injured. This was the epicenter. The explosion was about 2,000 feet above this park. And even this river, the water was boiling, and still thousands of people jumped in, running away from heat. In the left corner, you can see pictures of the atom bomb. The upper bomb is the uranium bomb named Little Boy, which was dropped on Hiroshima. Below it is the plutonium bomb called Fat Man, which was used on Nagasaki. They weigh from four to four and one half tons each. Their destructive power is equal to 20,000 tons of TNT or gunpowder. Well, most of the people living in this city, they're all dead, well, almost half dead. And gradually, in one year, two years, three years, everybody dead almost. Even the sec second generation are going to die now. This, this, is, this is Vietnam, this is Pakistan, this is every place, every, the way the war machine say that this is all of this. Thank you for visiting this museum, and may your journey be enjoyable. So, good luck and sayonara. That's right, I've seen Charlie, Luke the Gook, whatever you want to call him, NVA. 
Right there laying down as I walk by. I look at him, he looks at me. Cause he's going by my business. This man didn't do me nothing. He didn't hurt me in no type of way. He hurt none of my black people, none of my families. So why should I shoot him? What do we come in the Marine Corps for? All right, they say we come in to uphold the democratic government, okay? I don't see anything democratic about it. It's nothing but capitalism. That's all it is, and imperialism. That's all it is. And like, uh, I feel all black men should be exempt from our military duty anyway. Because uh, no, right yeah, right on. the only First place a black man should First fight is where he's being oppressed. And I'm not being oppressed in Japan. I'm not being oppressed in Vietnam. And I'm not being oppressed in Pakistan. And I'm not going to Pakistan. I go to jail first. And as far as being over here, I'm here because we're not one over here. That's the only reason I'm here now. And like, uh, I feel all the brothers that's here today and all the brothers that's all over the world, it's time for to wake up. Yes. It's time for us to do something about this man. This man has been doing, this, doing us too long. General Way got on this base, General Owens. He himself, he'll, he'll sit, if you ever go, in, a lot of blacks have went, went in there and rapped to him, he'll tell you, he is from the South. Like he, like I was rapping to him the other day. I said like, uh, do you feel that there is any prejudice on this base? He says, uh, yes, I feel there's prejudice on this base, but like uh, I'm trying to do everything in my power to correct it. And you know, me, myself, I see with my own eyes and I hear, and I don't see nothing being done or corrected. I mean, we just had a, we had a CEO that would come out and tell you, I don't like blacks, you know? I don't like blacks. I, his name was Jones. He got his father's uh, general or somebody, you know? Lieutenant Jones, sucking for his ass. I hope you look at his film, too. <laughs> <laughs> There's people like Lieutenant Colonel Limbach, Colonel Kelly, uh, Sergeant Major, Sergeant Major, Sergeant Major, Sergeant Major, Sergeant Major the tired stuff, all of them tired. General Owens, it, it's all these swines on his face. It's causing blacks to get their mind the way it is now, you see? And, and a frame to wear ass. You know, we, we, we got to be in, in, a, in a unionized, in a, in a, in a unity, a state of unity, you know? Like, uh, this is the first place I've seen where there's so much uh, unity <coughs> within the blacks and the Puerto Ricans as one, as a whole. Because back in the world, using civilians, the blacks and the, and the Spanish, they just at each other's throats. I went home, I leave, I peeped this, and I had a suit, man, I had to come back. I, as much as I hated to come back to, to base, man, I just left, man, because there was no kind of unity. They were at each other's throats, man. Because I grew up in the ghettos, and I, I'm, I'm willing to go back. I'm going to go back, because I got a job in those ghettos. That's to try to get my brothers off of dope, for one. <coughs> That's to try to keep my brothers from killing up each other. That's number two. Number three is to educate my brothers as to what is happening in this world today. Once I get them off their dope, once I stop them from killing up each other, I got to educate them. That's why I'm educating myself right now, so I can go back and try to educate them. Brother P, talking about educate yourself. Like, I know for one thing for him and one thing for me. Like, any book we read, you know, we got a dictionary beside us. In case we run across a word, we don't know what it means. We looking it up. Like, hey, how many people can tell me what communist is, you know? Like, a whole lot of people talk about, wow, you communist, man. You don't even know what it is, you know? Socialism. Revolution, freedom, blackness. I mean, y'all can go in the dick. I mean, how you y'all been in the dictionary to look at them words? And before you can start a revolution, you gotta know about Marx, Mao, Ho Chi Minh, Shade. You gotta know. I mean, like you just can't jump out and have a revolution. Like you can go along with it and do what you know if you don't know it all. But before you have a revolution, you gotta know the conditions you gotta live under. What you gotta sacrifice for it. That's why I want friendship. I want brotherhood and revolutionaries. I mean, to me, myself, what it all boils down to, like the situation over in Ewakuni, the situation on the military bases all over the world, is just a reflection of what's happening back in the world. Like That's you won't, right. You won't see a change here until you see a change back in the world. You're really right. Because, like, that's what the power structure is back in the world. That's right. Like, I die, if I die, I die for a cause, something I believe in. I'm happy, but I ain't gonna just die by getting hit by a straight bullet and don't know what's going on. Then I'm pissed off. Give me a cause that I can believe in, and let me die for that. No, let you live to fight for that.